Good afternoon, everybody. John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. A lot of news is dropping today, so let's get right into it. So I did a video the other day concerning the wild theory, and it was a theory, so please remember some theories about everything that's going on with Asmodee right now. Uh, at least Asmodee North America, miniature market the lack of reveals or releases or future releases coming out of Atomic Mass Games for Star Wars Legion, Armada, X-Wing, and of course, Marvel Crisis Protocol, which we talk about a lot here. And to add fuel to that fire, we already knew that there's already global shipping issues going on here in, uh, well, not even just here, but all over the world. And since a lot of what Atomic Mass Games and Asmodee, Fantasy Flight Games, even Games Workshop, at least in regards to their books and various other companies, everything is shipped out of China. And recently, uh, I want to say about a week or two ago, could be a little bit more, a little bit less, um, one of the biggest cities in China got shut down for um, the Omicron COVID variant. And we're talking millions of people, basically, they're on lockdown. And recently, well, as of reported today at the Wall Street Journal and over here on ICV2, so full credit to them, uh, we found out that the port city, uh, which is a very, is a key city in regards to shipping uh, stuff out of China to the rest of the world. And, you know, we, as long as we focus mainly on the gaming side, you know, most of our gaming stuff that isn't produced here in the U.S. and why, why companies are not using Mexico, who has great printing and great manufacturing capabilities, why, why North America is not using them, I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, we have found out that um, the city, the manufacturing side, the factory side is up and running now. However, it doesn't do a whole lot of good because the, the transportation side, the truckers and whatnot are not picking up at the factories, dropping off at the warehouses and transferring from the warehouses to the ships to be, well, shipped across the, the sea on the slow boat from China. And it's literally a, show bo a slow boat from China, guys. It's not like a high speed boat. It is a large cargo ship and it takes time to get here. So when we take into account that the truckers and the, the shipping and everything, the dock workers are not able to uh, perform their job, that is, uh, well, obviously bad. That's the reason why we're seeing major delays in shipping, not only from uh, Asmodee, Atomic Mass Games, but also Games Workshop and various other companies. Totally understandable. We've already known this was an issue, but now as the backlog that, at least here in North America, we've been facing uh, mainly because of the various stupid things that California has going on, uh, preventing um, the ships for like months, like six months from getting backed up. And now the ships kind of came around to, it looks like Florida, Texas, and maybe a couple other um, East Coast states to drop off that product. But still, uh, we, we had that shipping issue has been largely resolved. Now, we're having a shipping from a, a home location, which is very, very frustrating because we, that the product's there, it's ready to go. And if you're not familiar, most companies, and Games Workshop is the greatest example, is they usually are about a year out, maybe up to two years out working on product and approximately nine months out from its re release date is when they start doing their um, uh, production level for shipping, for um, meeting not only the company's store, for the company's warehouses, but all for the retailers and, and, and such. So uh, everything's sitting there, ready to go, but needs to be transferred and it needs to be shipped. And it's just not gonna happen right now. So we have that problem. And then we add in the problems of North America, Asmodee, the big snafu and the refunding and their very possibly illegal behavior in regards to um, the miniature market uh, snafu that they got going on with breaking a uh, violating map is there, there's a lot going on. That's probably why we're seeing some limited releases 
or lack of information rolling out. Now there's some stuff still does creep up, but it is highly um, filtered. <laughs> I mean, right now, game, or not Games Workshop, but Atomic Mass Games just revealed today, and we're gonna take a look at those cards. Uh, the the next cards for uh, to, for Marvel Crisis Protocol. They are barely trickling stuff out, stuff that's already hit the internet. In fact, we did a video last week on those reveals, and now they've got their official reveal out. So it's there's a lot of bad things going on. And I said before, half of this is all theories. The other half is facts. And Atomic Mass Games is still doing their best to get that information out there to us, but they're struggling. Their hands are tied. And I don't think they're in danger of uh, collapsing or anything like that. I mentioned that last week. I'm going to stick by that. There's no reason to think that this lack of information means that, um, that they're tanking. I think uh, all their, pro their IPs are doing well. The Marvel IP, the Star Wars IP, especially since they took over the Star Wars from Fantasy Flight Games, which is just very bad at, uh, at at game design, at least for miniatures and RPGs. So we're still sitting and waiting. And hopefully we'll get some newer updates and we don't have to wait until June. I think about this, probably about the second or third week of June of 2022 to hear about what's coming down the line for Star Wars and uh, Marvel games out of Atomic Mass Games, but it could very well be. So we're gonna brace for that. Let's move on to the next bit of news. So uh, I've mentioned the cards before, watch that video and you can also screenshot this or just go to the Atomic Mass Games, either the transmission uh, tab or their Facebook to read the Vendetta and the Bounty Hunters that I covered here from a source that is now proven reliable. Yay, another reliable source, I'm super excited. So take, out, take a look at those cards, you'll see what I'm talking about and verbatim, the, the information matched up. Uh, the other thing that we got going on is coming up on the 24th, at least here central time on, I think that's Tuesday or no, Wednesday the 24th, Thursday the 24th, right? Let me check here. Thursday the 24th at 9 p.m. central time, uh, uh, at least here in North America, the Games Workshop, they're gonna be doing their Adepticon preview and it's going to be covering everything from Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. The newly minted title, it looks like, and I could be wrong, but I think in the past uh, few months, it is now Warhammer the Horus Heresy. It's their rebranding, Necromunda, Warhammer Underworlds, and Blood Bowl. And we might still see some other things uh, slipped in there, but at least those six big games are going to be getting some major updates uh, for... Um, the Adepticon preview, which is really good because with the delays that they're experiencing because of uh, the Omicron, uh, COVID, the unfortunate war that's going on against uh, Ukraine, thanks to Russia and Belisarus, or soon to be Belisarus, and of course, global shipping issues. Um, it's good that they're putting this information out here now because this gets people excited and then they can build up on this over the next few months by going, okay, well, remember that Warhammer preview that we did for 40K? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna cut that up and we're gonna be spreading that out over the next few months until the release happens. And I think that's what Atomic Mass Games should be doing now instead of waiting until June. But, you know, they're big brain, they know what they're doing. I'm just going to assume that uh, everything's gonna be well there. Now, the last thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up a brand new tab. Um, we, I talked about Ruins of Symborum uh, from Free League a couple times. And I even have a video for it. I've got a new upcoming video because I have um, an update from, directly from uh, Free League Publishing that I'm gonna be getting preview copy or copies of the game to do a review here on YouTube and set, and they're sending me some other knickknacks, I guess you can call it, or files. So I can launch a Roll D20 and or a Foundry when we go live for a bi-monthly or bi, no, yeah, bi-monthly, twice a month, our Symborum RPG that we're working on. We're still getting all the details for the layout and whatnot, but we're gonna be doing a live stream of the classic or the core Symborum game but we also might delve into the, the 5e version. Now, the reason why I wanna bring up the 5e version is A, 
I'm getting that product to review and B, it is a great transition, especially for those of you that are currently in Dungeon, playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e, mainly or probably for the first time, this is a great opportunity to try a better setting than the classic Dungeons and Dragons. Classic Dungeons and Dragons is kind of played out. It's, it's uh, if you haven't noticed that Wizards of the Coast are now delving into other settings and they're getting prepped for their 5.5, really it's sixth edition to come out, I think in 2023. So all this is coming down the line. We've already got a kind of a, a preview of the new-ish edition with the recent set that came out that um, kind of broke the limits. Goodness, excuse me. Broke the limits for um, like the racial uh, attribute limits and abilities and such. They, they got rid of some of those things to be less restrictive and more inclusive. So with 5e still hot as hell and we've got tv we got a movie coming out with chris pine uh michelle rodriguez and a couple other people i think next year the box machina for all its faults is still wildly popular on amazon and i want to be able to introduce through this channel at least the runes of some um symborum or simba room uh 5e which I think is a much, much better setting. And I hate to equate it to another game system, but for those of you that are familiar with Dark Souls or um, Elden Ring, is it Elden Ring? Yeah, I think it's Elden Ring. The new game that's come out that's created lots of controversy because it's hard. Um, if you enjoy those style games, dark games that are going to be very challenging, Ruins of Symborum or the core rule set Symborum, is ideal for you if you want happy spook or um i don't know weird cartoony D, D or rpgs then stick with dungeons and dragons or tales of a stress est, uh est, est, Asteria? Asteria? nope i can't think of the name of it but the my little pony game if you want the bright and happy those are ideal for you but if you want something a little bit more realistic and a little bit more difficult a little bit more challenging not only uh from a combat perspective but role playing perspective the setting everything else and dive into something fresh something new something mysterious and dangerous ruins of some borm is for 5e or the classic rule set is ideal for you and we're going to be doing a big review of that uh, with the official rules once that uh, preview copy comes in enough of that my name is john and this has been another episode here on havoc maker studio and fmp war gamers and later on this week we'll have one more episode before i shut down the studio and that episode will have all the rules talking about how to do the giveaways or how to be entered into the giveaways. The biggest one I can tell you right now, down below, there is a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button right now. You're at least automatically entered for at least one entry. From there, you'll find out probably on Friday around 3 p.m. Central Time, I'll get the other video, so make sure you hit that notification bell, and I will chat with you all later. Have a good day.